set to be tabled in Parliament this afternoon. I want us to cross over to Kisumu and join Bramal Bwire, who is with some residents of Kisumu, to just give their take on this bill. Bramal, good morning. I hope you're well. Now, we've heard from residents of Kakamega and of Nyeri, and they're saying, you know, the devil is in the details and passing of this bill as is will mean hardship for Kenyans. What are residents of Kisumu saying? Well, good morning, Ashley. As you've said, yes, we're here in the Lakeside city of Kisumu, and it's quite uh, a sunny morning with a lot of anticipations and expectations from residents in this particular Lakeside counties. Ashley, this is one of the regions that is a uh, head of opposition. This is a region like a county with uh, out of its six members, five of them being from ODM region. You go to a county like Homer Bay, where we have a majority of ODM members also forming part of the members of, par of parliament from this particular caucus, same to Sierra County. So it will be very interesting to see how the members of parliament from these particular regions are going to discuss and vote that particular controversial bill. Remember on Saturday, the SG of ODM, that is uh, Senator Edwin Sifuna, was in this particular region, particularly attending the Finland to the father, the mother to the mother to Senator Tom Ojenda. Tom Ojenda is one of the ODM rebels. Remember, those are some of uh, the five MPs or the five allied members of parliament who were voted in on ODM ticket, but later on shifted their allegiance to President William Ruto, allied Kenya Kwanzaa government. But with me here, I have uh, one of particular residents of this particular region, Wakili. Thank you for speaking to us. On Saturday, you were seen in Rangwe constituency, and you are very vocal, agitating, and uh, calling on uh, members of the public to continue piling pressure onto their members of parliament to vote no. Why are you so passionate about this particular controversial bill? Uh, we, 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 I'm very passionate about uh, everything that is taking place. And more particularly, you know, we say once beaten, twice shy. We know what happened last year, and we sent memoranda to uh, 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 Parliament, public participation, we attended everything, and everything was clear that we did not want the bill to be passed. Now this year, we can see the same script, and we, it's our fear that the same thing is going to be passed, regardless of the fact that people are not for it. And that's why we are here trying to look at a scenario whereby we need to probably from the grassroots sensitize our member of members of parliament what do they need to do in such a circumstance because to me my understanding is a member of parliament or and should be somebody who is able to listen to the views of the people and to take the views of the people to parliament actually if the, if science can avail an opportunity where everyone uh, uh, can walk into parliament to vote then trust me, there can never be members of parliament. Because the ideal situation is that people must vote on some. That's why there are, there are some that we even go through referenda, where we need almost everyone's opinion. But because it is not physically possible, it is not practical that all of us can march to the August House to go and vote, that's why we have been given an opportunity to select somebody who is going to represent us. Trust me, I am very sure that almost no member of parliament has met or organized meetings with the constituents, even from what level, to listen to them and to ask them what is their opinion, so that when they are going there, they don't discuss what they dreamt at night, they don't discuss what they met in the highway, but they discuss how they engage the people. Some of them, trust me, in the entire this session have not even been seen in our villages except for funerals. But this is the time they're supposed to be in the grassroots. That kind of allowance that they're being, be, being given to commute and to move and to interact with the people. Here is where we want it spent. They have meetings at village level and they go to parliament saying, I met my people and they said no to this bill. You don't go there and then you make decisions depending on who fed you last. And that is why we must say no. Okay, uh, this bill... There are, there are some of, uh, say, of some of clauses that have been termed punitive. According to you, what should be amended first by the members of parliament before being passed in totality? I don't want to go into the merits of the bill because uh, uh, it, it's long. But my understanding is, can we be first know what democracy is? Brian, let me tell you this. Eh? 
whether the bill is good or not, whether it is punitive or not, if members of public feel that it is a no to them, it is a no to them. You don't come and say, I am the president, and so I, I, I need to give you this, it is good for you. We are not children. If we are going to suffer because that bill doesn't exist, it is us who are going to suffer, not the president. So regardless of whichever clause that is punitive or not, because you see this thing, trust me, if you make, if, if you, if you make it political, and then you now want to probably interpret it, give it interpretation, trust me, there are somebody who will still convince you that that bill is good, even in long term. We are not disagreeing, but democracy demands that you listen to what do the people want. Even if we are going to our oh, hungry, trust me, you're not even allowed to feed me by force if I don't want to eat. You need to listen to me. What is the ground talking about? It is wrong. Whether it is going to build us mansion it or doing what or make life look like what or make us look like London the next day, if we are saying no, that is democracy, it is a no. Finally, before I let you go, Akili, there have been calls of members of the public to be converging at the parliament just a few hours or minutes to that discussion of, uh, of, the, of that particular bill. This is a particular region that we also have, we've also had members of public saying that they'll also be watching keenly in carcasses just to ensure that, uh, just to ensure that uh, they stand in solidarity with the members of public who are in Nairobi. What is your take on that? You know, if you see members of public traveling to Nairobi to go and converge and to send an information, it means that members of parliament we elected have failed. Because ordinarily the meeting they are going to seek there ought to have happened at village level. So that they are going with the endorsement of the community that from us it is a no. Brian, let's just wind the history. Does it even excite people that members of parliament are going to de debate over national affairs? Recently, when Marende Kenneth and the likes of Ole Kapara were speaker, and debates were debated in parliament, people would close offices and take holiday to go and watch how people are engaging on issues. Right now, a debate is going on, and it's like nothing is taking place because there is nothing of value to drive and take home. They just, they met overnight, or they have been given whatever they, they need to be given, and we know obviously for some of them, they are going to walk out, they don't want to vote, why do you walk out? Because democracy demands that the majority will have their say, and the minority, I mean, the majority will have their way, and the minority will have their say. Be the minority, we want the answer to record that you said no, not that you walked away. That is what we want. We want you to be there and represent us. If no is going to be no, we want it to be on record that who and who voted for no so that we can account. Let me tell you, there are members of parliament who in 10 years are going to come here. They want to be president of this republic. We want to go back and peruse the Hansard and see how they punished at some point. And that's why we want them to be there. They don't boycott. We don't want parliamentarians who are going to be missing and they don't prefer reasons and they don't apologize. So now I'm saying they have failed in their mandate. That's why the members of the public want to send an information. They want to wait for them at the entrance of parliament with placards to tell them that true, we are badly off. We don't want it, whether it is good for us or whichever way you interpret it, we don't want it. Thank you, Akili. Yes. Some of the uh, insights from uh, Clifford Oviero, a Kisumu best lawyer, turned politician. He was seen on film, I'm calling him a politician because he was seen in a funeral telling people passionately to vote no and to tell their parliamentarians, call them and tell them to vote no. And he's standing by that account saying that regardless of how the bill is, regardless of the clauses, whether good or bad, once the public says it's a no, then the parliamentarians, parliamentarians have no obligation to debate and uh, say otherwise. They have to go by the views and the say of the public. From here, Ashley, some of, uh, uh, some of discussions are going to continue.